Cool. So my name is Luca. I am DevRel at Tenderly Company. And uh, today we are going to talk about how to improve user experience of your dApps using some of our tools. And since we have a bounty for this hackathon, we are going to talk about a couple of tools that can be useful for you to build better products in your projects. Uh, and obviously, if you have any questions, reach, reach out to us in the, in the booth. So the goal of today's session is for you to understand better what Tenderly is. If you haven't used it before, we are going to start by introducing the Tenderly as a whole and then some of our pieces of products that can be beneficial for you. Um, and finally, we are going to switch the gears and close the whole session by introducing the bounty and see how that uh, how are we going to judge it, what is, uh, what is the, um, the, the pricing pool and so, so on. And to achieve that goal, uh, we have six or sorry, five parts of the presentation. We are going to start by introducing the Tenderly, switching to something we call Web3 Gateway, which is our node as a service, and then talking about simulations and Web3 actions, and then Bounty, obviously. Cool. So Tenderly, in general, is a development platform to help you guys build better products from basically end to end. We support like the whole development life cycle from ideation stage uh, to, through the development to deployment infrastructure. And in our offering, we have three parts, like for tools that are only for developing, then for observability, and then infrastructure, which we are going to focus today. From the development side, we have our debugger, which is visual debugger to allow you to uh, debug line by line and call by call of the of your contracts and uh, you can see and work with your teammates to detect what is actually wrong with your transactions uh, on that note we have something called simulations that will allow you to uh, simulate those transactions and see how it would uh, react on the chain if you change and make those like tweaks to your code and into to transactions like our arguments and stuff like that for observability, we won't spend that much time today here, but basically analytics, alerts, and stuff that you're probably used to it on other places as well. And then infrastructure 3.0, as we call it, we have many of the things there, some of them being um, web reactions that are pretty unique and simulation APIs and forks, and node as a service, which is web free gateway in our case. Cool. So uh, before we jump to more specific things, this is where, yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, I don't know, it is like this part of cable. <laughs> Sorry for that, I don't know. Um, we actually changed the whole adapter and it's still blinking. Yeah, uh, so this is basically a representation where uh, where the tenderly lies into your... Okay, you will lose the witness, right? <laughs> it's, it's fine. So this is the, this is the representation of uh, where tenderly lies in your development process. So you have all the EVM networks, then we have tenderly on the top, traditional ways of developing your smart contracts, and on top of that, obviously, your dApps. So basically, you can rely on Tenderly uh, to utilize normal tools as you would to build basically your products. Two days ago, we released Web3 Gateways. And Web3 Gateways is our like version of Node as a Service offering, where it's basically tuned to every single part of our platform, starting from alerting, debugger, our Web3 actions, and transaction simulations. So you can basically build the full fledged application on top of that. And we compared to other offerings, based on, based on benchmark, we have eight times faster performance and it is 100% data consistency across the board and it's lower cost. So we have start, started basically zero dollars. So it's a free tier and for First 1,000 registered users for life, it will be $50 per month, that's it. And how we reached this goal, well, of eight times faster, accessing the archive data is, we have availability across the board, so we're based where you're sending a request, we are going to reach to that node, one being in the US, so if you're developing today, that's where you're going to get the data from, and one in Europe, and in a couple of weeks, we are going to to release two more uh, in 
US as well, and one more in uh, Asia. So wherever you are in the world, you will basically have consistent speed uh, across the board for reaching the data. And that's, that's basically it. So, and one more additional thing before we switch to simulations, if you just choose to apply this to your projects, you're going to get a special <laughs> merge from us, which is a vacuum cleaner for your keyboards and stuff. So it's just a fun, nothing, <laughs> nothing special. Cool. So that's basically like the node the service, you can uh, interact with it as you would with any other like a JSON, uh, JSON RPC format, so you can choose all the other things. But let's let's talk about simulations. So how many of you have you used Tenderly so far? Okay, um, do, did you use simulations? Nice. So this is basically one of the most used parts of our product, and it allows you to run simulations on either transactions that are never happened, so you're just preventing and trying to see what would happen if you push to the network, or you want to debug it in the past and see how it would change based on like some parameter changes. Like here you can see like, for example, you can choose the address, you can choose the contract itself, the network, the input data, and you can run the simulation obviously without reaching to the, to the network and spending the real, uh, real resources. Uh, and it's tightly integrated to your product because it can be exposed through API and CLI. So basically you can integrate to your product and build one, for example, demo account for your app and allow users to like use your app without actually sp spending any money. And all of that can be integrated to your project. So some of the ways that we uh, saw using simulations helped our users being one, improving UX, and one is allowing users to run simulations on their own uh, without spending the money, for example, exchanges. So you can run the tr transaction exchanging from one to another and seeing, like having a proof that it will work, how much resources it will check, and, and obviously guess estimation will be much more accurate with that as well. So through integrating simulation API, and that's more on technical side from you for you to uh, consider if you're going to tune into this uh, to this uh, feature for Tenderly. And obviously this will help your users to be more uh, precise with their actions, remove the anxiety part, so everybody of, potentially everybody sitting here, including myself, have anxiety when you send a transaction, what will happen. And with these simulations, you are not removing everything, but you're just decreasing it a bit, so you're having more confidence in your users, and obviously by doing that, you're having much better user experience. The other one is also like we have forks that is integrated with a simulation. So one simulation will simulate a transaction, but what if you have, let's say 10 transactions that are relying on one another? So for that, we, you can spin up the fork for any network and each transaction will change the state of the fork as it would for the network in general. So you can basically run transactions one on another and get information from there. And for that, basically, integration testing can be done with that for, for you uh, to make sure that all the pieces of your app work correctly. And, or you can just test a transaction itself. Um, for that, we have, like, when you spin up the fork, you get a traditional RPC URL, put it in your project, and you basically interact it as you would with any other network. And Obviously this, you can see, it makes sense. Like you're just testing your network and it produces much better and sustainable products from your end. To help you better understand how it would help for your hackathon projects, like you can create onboarding experience, for example, for your users, like some of our clients, and I will say their names in the next slide, users our simulations at Forks to create an onboarding experience and make sure that every single part of your product is working as as, uh, as should. Uh, there are a couple of, uh, couple of things that running simulations will help you prevent from making a mistake or uh, getting more accurate information from the network and so on. And the real cases are here. So these three clients of ours are using simulations APIs and forks to 
uh, in their products. Like for example, InstaDev has built a full demo account. So whenever before sending and creating a demo account on InstaDev and spending the money, I don't know how much it is right now, but I, I think it's ninety dollars. And if you don't, if you're unsure if you want to spend those ninety dollars, you can spin up the demo account and uh, basically get information from it, in, interact with the, with the whole in infrastructure of theirs. Say, for example, uses for two different reasons. One, for their internal engineers, and obviously for testing purposes of uh, and checking if the, their solutions to the bugs are actually worth it. So what happens is basically you have an exploit in the system. You can run the fork moments before the exploit, and you can push the change of your contract just before that happened. And you can see if that exploit would have happened if you had that version of the contract. So you can do that with the forks and simulations. And obviously SAFE allows us, uh, allow their users to, to test their simulations and, and um, before executing them on chain. Yield uses that for testing purposes and dry runs of transactions. Yeah. So now that, do you have any questions before we move to the web reactions? Okay, <laughs> so web reactions is something that will be actually good friend of yours in, in the hackathon today um, and tomorrow. And it is kind of a serverless uh, part of um, your ecosystem. So you can build a backend for your apps uh, and that can be like those are small pieces of code that are going to be executed once some criterion is met, like either on-chain or off-chain. And you can remove a lot of infrastructural part by using web free gateway, sorry, web free, web free actions. And that will help you actually to create much better and robust uh, systems in that way. So here you can define a trigger. We're going to speak about triggers in a second. And you can define your custom code, and that's it. So you can you can basically do that. Um, and why? Well, obviously, it makes your apps more robust, more agile in a sense, and you, it creates a good user experience uh, by, for example, notifying them or uh, using certain parts of the app that uh, can be automated. So now that you have just a high level of potentially understanding of what web free, uh, web free actions are. Uh, let's dig deeper and see from a technical standpoint what is, goes into building one web free action. So it has two building blocks, one being uh, action function. So it's a piece of code that could be either in a JavaScript or TypeScript format. And you would write as any action, any function. And it has some nuances that you need to follow to uh, to be classified as an action function. Like first off, it needs to be exported. It has some name, like it's your choice. Uh, it's action function type and it should be asynchronous. It obviously has your logic and that's basically it, except for input, it always has context and event. So let's bring, bring that up and see what those two are. So event is something that you're going to wait for to happen so that you, this function is going to be executed. And for context, it allows you to access two different things of your, uh, for, for web free actions. One being secrets. So if you, for example, want to call a certain API uh, when something happens uh, on chain, you can do that, but you need, for example, an API key for that. And instead of using .env, you can have secrets inside of Tenderly, and you can access all of that data through context. And other, other thing is storage. So sometimes between execution of your function, you need to store some bits of information. So you're like having that and uh, not repeating something. For example, here in this picture below is a piece of storage which um, stores information of tic-tac-toe. So for example, you want to have information of the state of board, like you can't play the same move twice. So for that, you have this information which can be either extracted to your front end or basically uh, interacted directly with your smart contract and not and preventing with making a mistake. And that brings us to the second building block and the last of uh, web reaction, which is the trigger. So trigger, in my opinion, is one of the most interesting parts here. 
Uh, so that's what needs to happen for that piece of code to be executed. So here are four main types, block being the simplest one, saying, okay, when the block is lined on the network of our choice, let's execute this piece of code. So let's say you can monitor the mainnet from our end and say every, every tenth block that goes to the mainnet, let's, uh, in, let's inform our users on the Discord that has happened. Like, that's a simple use case, but you can do it. The periodic one, if you use a cron jot, that's it. So basically you can set up some period of time and say every 10 minutes, every 10 seconds, every 10 lines, whatever, let's execute this piece of code. And that's periodic. The webhook is when a certain webhook is sent, like when the HTTP request is sent, let's execute additional functionality of that, which you can do here. And you can see that periodic webhook are not on chain base, so it can be either chain or off chain base. Transaction, in my opinion, whenever I demo the real uh, use case of web reactions, that's what I use. And that's basically tuning directly to the emitted events from your uh, contract. So you can say, okay, when this event emitted from this address, you can go and specify as much information as you want to uh, this uh, trigger uh, setup. And when that happens, let's execute some piece of code. So we are constantly monitoring all the network that we support. And you can basically do that. And here is just a simple configuration. You don't have to remember this. All of this is in documentation. Uh, so we have pretty standardized documentation that will help you build all of the triggers with as much complexity as you need for your projects. And basically, you have completely freedom to customize this as much as possible. And one thing is the web free actions are completely free. So in either in a free tier of account, um, you will get like to play a lot with this. So some of ideas that will help you integrate web reactions that we saw our users are using. So first off, you can react to some chain events. So basically when something happened, as I mentioned before, you can execute additional code, inform the users, um, run additional functionality and so on. Then you can automate the Discord notifications that can be tightly directed with something that has happened either on-chain or off-chain. You can cr create a DAO that increases DAO participation by notifying constantly users to vote, for example, that can happen. You can reduce gas spending. So basically you can write a rule that execute pieces of code or send a transaction when the gas is lowest. You can set basically the check how much gas is currently costing and when the trigger is met, you can basically run the transaction. You can build multi-purpose bots, Twitter, whatever you like. You can use that and, and build bots around that. You can even send a transaction from web, pre, web reaction. I don't recommend it because of the security. Don't do that, but you can. <laughs> um, then you can create alerting system. So it's the most common case. So you can create like a front end and send a request like alerting systems to particular users, group of users or whatever. You can have a completely freedom of, uh, of uh, accessing your data, sending that, uh, that to the transactions and so on. And obviously it's a, your hackathon assistant. So you can automate and uh, a lot, sorry, automate a lot of things from the backend side by using this. And now that we went through more of a technical side, let's, let's talk about uh, our uh, bounty. So the goal of the bounty is not to use tenderly a lot. You, you should <laughs> if you want to participate, but it's about making your UX better for your users. We won't judge on how much you use tenderly, but how much that piece of tenderly will increment user experience. The total pool is $5,000, and the expectation is basically that. We, want, we will judge on what is the innovative way or approach of applying either web reactions, gateways, um, and or uh, simulations. So you can choose to apply all of three. You can choose to apply only one. So it's not to be judged on how much you apply, but how you apply it. And the complexity is something that we just put it there, but Obviously, it can be as simple as sending a notification, but if it's a crucial part of your application, that's something. 
and the price is, is separated in this way. And obviously, don't forget the vacuum cleaner. So that's something that needs to be remembered. Um, scanning this QR code, you will get two months free dev account. So no matter if you <laughs> use Tenderly or not, here you go. <laughs> it would be a good joke to automatically add me on the Discord like you if it's tender. <laughs> So uh, obviously, if you didn't scan it now, or you have friends that needs dev account from your teams, you know where to find us, and we will give you the access to those keys, so you don't have to like be limited to this slide only. And the the, on, the other reason is you, the other thing is you will find us every three days here. So if you need help from us, please reach out, and we will help you with that. Uh, also, we have um, on call team in Belgrade. So if you are working overnight. There is other time zone that will be awake. So hey, just send a just send a message on our Discord and we'll be there to help you. Thank you.